yesterday's Board of Supervisors meeting should not be taken lightly and should be uh, something that we are all outraged about and it should be something that we take action on. Uh, the comment that the man who I now understand is Jason Robo, uh, and I will be asking for his firing at his job, I will be going after every angle uh, to ensure that he faces penalties uh, and he feels the pain for what he did. Uh, what he did yesterday was worse than anything else he said. What he said about supervisors was wrong. What he said about public servants was wrong. But he went further to then go with a racial assault of literally taking us back to a time in 1860, taking us back to a time where, uh, uh, as described when they removed uh, uh, Aunt Jemima from the syrup, uh, uh, when they removed her from the syrup, it was because it was a description of a mammy, which historically is, a, is, a, is particularly a black woman who was a servant, a slave, and was used as a, uh, as a servant and, and a slave to treat their children, the slave owner's children, better to, than their own children. So there's a history here with this description and the use of this kind of language. And I wanna say today, that the language that was used on Dr. Wilma Wooten, who is a non-county supervisor, she does not get elected by the people of County of San Diego. She does not get elected by the people of County of San Diego. She is a public servant who is appointed by the Board of Supervisors. That this kind of assault on a black woman, that this kind of assault on a public health officer will not be tolerated by the community. Today, I hereby am announcing that we are issuing, my office is issuing, a policy proposal to the Board of Supervisors that will be issued today in a letter requesting that they end the use of this blatant, blatant uh, 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 public comment that is taking place at the Board of Supervisors meeting by ending the use of racial incitements, in, in, a racial, uh, 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 racial incite, inciting. What we saw yesterday was a racial inciting. He was seeking to incite something by calling her Aunt Jamama. There is a racial connotation of that. Calling Tara Lawson Raymer a monkey is wrong, but it's not racially inciting. Calling County Supervisor Nora Vargas uh, a, a, a fact, that's wrong, but it's not inciting. And even saying, uh, and I'm talking racially inciting, and even saying that uh, County Supervi uh, Chairman Nathan Fletcher should, uh, should die. That is not racially inciting. But using the language that you're going to call a black woman who is not a county supervisor, a Aunt Jemama, that is racial inciting. And, it, and today my office is proposing that the Board of Supervisors bring forth a policy proposal, and I will uh, issue this to the Board of Supervisors today. I'm asking them to ban the use of racial inciting, any racial comments, any commentary that is racism or racial, that incites racism, that those would be banned from the Board of Supervisors meetings at public comments. And that therefore that means that when a person uses a racial incitement at a public Board of Supervisors meeting during public comment, that their time would be ceded to the Board of Supervisors and their mic would be cut off. What I am requesting is actually not unusual because last night, County Supervisor Nora Vargas cut him off. She cut him off, and then she proceeded to uh, ask him that, that he cannot make the comment he made. So she put herself on record. And this is not against her. I actually thank her for doing what she did. Now I'm asking the Board of Supervisors to implement a policy based on what she did. And then the county chairman returned and banged his gavel, and he said that Obviously, he was not there the whole time, which this is not the first time that the now county chairman uh, was not there when Dr. Wilma Wooten was being assaulted, but that's another subject because he seems to have a trouble r racially defending a black woman who is the public county, who is the public uh, health officer of the county of San Diego, maybe because he doesn't understand the connotations of Aunt Jemima. But let me help educate Nathan Fletcher on who Aunt Jemima is because there is a history with Aunt Jemima. And the history is that she was a mammy who was used as a servant. 
So, and she was, and, and she was expected to treat the servant, the, the, the uh, slave owner's children better than her own children. So there is a history and a connotation with that kind of language. And the reason why the chairman needs to be robust on this and he needs a, po a policy on this is because the language that was used was insightful to racism. And there needs to be leadership now that ends it. So County Chairman Nathan Fletcher returned, banged his gavel three times and said his time was ceded. Well, now I'm asking the supervisors to implement a policy so we can make sure we never have to have this problem again. So we can make sure that we can end this problem now. And this is not the first time that Dr. Wilma Wooten was attacked. You remember last year, you joined me when I said that it was wrong that her address was being put on public comment. This is not the first time and we will not tolerate it. Dr. Lawana Richmond at this time. Good afternoon. So Shane has already said a lot, but I think um, I just have to say as an educated black female professional, um, it's highly offensive and I need people to understand why it is so particularly troubling um, when you look at this situation. Uh, walking into a room, immediately racial stereotypes and tropes are applied to me before I open my mouth. I should not have to explain what my credentials are, where they came from, how long I studied, what my research was on, or what professional experience I have in order to have credibility. And every time a black woman is attacked with these types of tropes, it reinforces these negative stereotypes. Stan, Shane did a really good job of talking about that Aunt Jemima trope and the history of it, but the re reality is in this country, because my ancestors were forced into domestic servitude. There are a lot of people who make the assumption that that is who we are. Um, there are several tropes about black women. Many of them, most of them, I would even say all of them are unfavorable in one way or another. Probably the kindest one is the magical Negro who helps to further the interests of whatever white character they're there to support in a film or story. Uh, I um, have had the honor of meeting um, and working with um, Dr. Wooten in the past on community projects, and I'm particularly offended for her because I know that she has always been professional, and even under the face of these attacks, um, she doesn't punch down, and she deserves to be defended by the people that have her in this position in the first place. And I agree with this policy to shut it down, because when people hear something, every time they hear it, it goes into their um, brain and it gets processed. And unfortunately, our brain doesn't necessarily differentiate fact from fiction very effectively, and we start to begin or to reinforce um, things that are not true. And so I ask the public to be mindful in their communication and to understand that it's not just um, an epithet, it's um, particularly hurtful and it recalls some times that this country shouldn't be proud of. In fact, I would say the attack on critical race theory says that most people um, are not proud of that history. So let's not bring it up and pretend like it's okay. Thank you, Dr. Richmond, who is an educator, by the way, who understands this very clearly. I'll take questions now on the policy and uh, where we are going with this. I think that there should be more engagement from the media. Uh, any kind of insult like this should not be tolerated. Uh, by any San Diegan, and, and, and I, I want to be very clear. Uh, we should see a very clear stance from the chairman of the board, who is a white man by, 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 by nature, and should understand the context of how dangerous this actually was. It was an assault on black people. It was an assault on a black woman. It was an assault on somebody who has spent the last year working her you-know-what off to serve the people of San Diego. And whether you agree with her or not, I don't agree with everything, Dr. Wilk, but showing up to a meeting and this man, Jason Robo, went personal with his attacks. It doesn't matter if you agree. These people need to understand that we can have disagreements without being disagreeable. What happened to that? Okay, but why is it that when Black Lives Matter marches, we then get all angry and robust and, oh, they're doing too much? Well, what was he doing yesterday? Because I want to know what that was. I want to know how robust he had to go to insult somebody racially, to assault somebody racially. That, is, that has nothing to do with public health orders, nothing to do with vaccinations at all. 
So I'll take questions at this time. Can you talk about the severity of the policy, how much, um, aside from cutting off the mic, what you guys are planning to write in this policy? Well, uh, I think it's ultimately uh, very simple. We are asking the supervisors to cut the mic off when someone is racially, when, when someone is using, and we, we clearly know what a racial incitement is because Nora Vargas stopped him. So she got into that, she jumped into that boat once she stopped him. And I get what she was trying to do, but it's a conundrum now because now you stopped him. And if you weren't supposed to do it, you did it. So now you're telling us it's possible. So she chose, we, we got past calling Tara Lawson Raymer a monkey. She should be on a, on a, on a tree, right? We got past uh, Nathan Fletcher. He should be, uh, he should kill himself, right? We got past Nora Vargas even being called fat. It was when he called Dr. Wilma Wooten on Jamama that she then stepped in and said, oh no, we, you can't do this. So we're asking that when a racial incitement is spoken of at the podium, that their mic is cut off and they have ceded the rest of their time. So if they have an, a, a minute left, 30 seconds left, they've now ceded the rest of their time to the, uh, to the uh, supervisors. What about subsequent meetings? Can they be invited back? Can they come back? I think, uh, I think that uh, we, we, we should not ban people from coming to public meetings. Um, I think that there should be, and we will include this in a policy, there should be a three strikes you're out policy. That if you do this three times, you can no longer enter the chambers. You can no longer uh, uh, enter the chambers at public meetings. You may be able to call in. I don't know how they can work that out because I think there's a freedom of speech clause. But if there was a freedom of speech clause, she broke it last night because she stopped him at where she considered racial incitement. So she actually helped us on this policy proposal. Now I'm asking them to implement it. There should be a three strikes you're out policy for in the chambers. Once you do this, because racial incitement should be counted as a, uh, should be counted as causing harm or danger to the, to the space, right? And when, when that happens, the supervisors ask the sheriffs to come in and proceed, the per, uh, uh, escort the person out. There should be a, uh, this should be included in our policy and will be included that there's a three strikes you're out policy. Once you do this three times, you are banned from the chambers of the county of San Diego. Because you. you're going to have to learn this lesson and you're going to have to learn it by omission or by commission. So if I was on the dais, I would make sure that by omission or commission, you're going to get this lesson and you're going to hear us loud and clear. Questions? All right. Uh, well, if there's no questions, I, I will say that what we saw yesterday was um, completely insulting. It was an assault on black culture. It was an assault on a black woman, and it should not be acceptable. And if the supervisors do not act, they are saying that they do not protect Dr. Wilma Wooten. They are saying that they do not protect black people. They are saying they don't protect black women, and they would allow this at another meeting. If they're serious about it, they'll follow protocol of Supervisor Nora Vargas. She stopped him. So if they want to go in that bag and say, well, we don't want to deal with freedom of speech. Well, you did it last night. So clearly you can deal with it. The question is whether you're going to internalize and make it a policy to ensure that people, and we will include these things in the policy, they can choose whether they want to keep this part of it or that part. But the point is we need to make a policy this should not be allowed, and this is why we're, my office is bringing this forward. When did you say you were going to present the policy? The we're board? issuing it to the Board of Supervisors uh, later today. I, I'm hoping around 3 p.m. And we'll make sure the media gets a copy of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That concludes our news conference. Thank you.